And welcome back to the Turdferg Network. All right, this video is part three of videos on magnetic fields having to do with wire. And the, if anything makes you feel good, right off the bat, it's just this. The only equation I'm going to use is this same mu o 2 pi r equation in this problem. All that's going on, the last problem we did had two wires that were parallel conductors, and we found the current at three different spots, left, middle, and right between them. This problem, what we're going to actually be looking at, and I'm going to draw a bigger, better version of that picture, but we're going to be trying to find what is B. And if you take a look in this picture, each wire is going to have its own B at that location. And we're going to add those together or subtract them in some way. We've got to figure that out. And to figure out, now here's the thing. To find direction in all these problems, all your directions are going to be coming via your right-hand rule is what we're that's horrible looking but anyway that's what we're going to be using to find these directions so i'm going to go ahead and start but i don't want to redraw that drawing that thing see if i can draw a little bigger better version of that so we've got th several wires here and so there's one wire hmm how can i draw this let's see there's one wire here and let's see how they did it they put an x here and what they're trying to say by that x yeah, I'm going to draw it. Megatron, big. And X. And what? Oh, you goofy computer. You sabotaged me yet again. And four wires, and they're all parallel with each other here. And I'm going to sit here. Kind of fill this in a little bit. And we're going to be looking for B at a point dead in the center of all this. So we're going to be looking for those Bs. Now, here's the reason why this one has an X. That lets me know the current is going into the page here. This one, this dot in the center, lets me know the current's coming right at me. And that's the idea of what's taking place here. Now, I would like to know these currents, if they're the same, what they are, for... All right, this problem was very nice. It's telling me that the current in every one of these wires, and my short-term memory just messed me up, about 8.5 amps. So the current in every wire on this page is 8.5 amps. And so that's for each one of them, which kind of stinks, because normally when I do my notation on these, I'll find like B for the 1 amp, B for the 3 amp, and that's usually how I do my notation. So they have kind of wrecked me in this department. Hey, let's see if I can erase that. Thank you. All right. So I will probably go through, and I'm just going to do some little unofficial numbering here. One, two, three, and I will call this one number four wire. So I've got four different wires, even though my writing is horrible at this point. Three and four on the other one down here. There's my four different wires, and I'm looking for B at the center. Now, to find the B, here's what's neat. Look at something. All we need to know, if we're looking for B, we need to do this. We need to know how far away each of these are from that point. Well, here's the cool thing. I think this one was a square. Let's go see if we we're right. It is. This is a square that's .2 on every single side. What that means is that R for every one of these is the same. So when we use our equation, mu O I 2 pi R, oh, this is beautiful. Every one of these has the exact same R, and they have the exact same I. So we know what B after one calculation is for every single one of these. So you're probably thinking, why are we doing this problem? Well, they're trying to get you used to know how these directions work in here. So let's see what we can't get into here a little bit. Let's see if we can't actually find that B. Well, to find it, I'm going to have to go ahead and notice something. I'm going to do a little Pythagorean. How can I find that radius? Well, if that's point 0.2, that means this would be point 0.1 and point 0.1. So check out this crazy-looking math. Point 0.1 squared plus point 0.1 squared equals square root. Oh my goodness, 0.14. So 
So that means my radius in this problem is 0.14 meters. So I found my radius by using Pythagorean. And now let's just do it. B equals mu O, which remember mu O, I'll write it out this time, is 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 times 8 and a half amps divided by 2 pi times, in this case, 0.14. Now, I'm way too lazy to type all that in the calculator, or way too smart. That 2 pi cancels the 4 pi to just a 2. And that must going to make my calculations go a little bit quicker here. So this is going to be 2 times 10 to the negative 7 times 8.5 divided by 0.14 means my field is 12 micro teslas and yes i keep doing all my answers in micros just because i'm too lazy to write all that times 10 to so my b is that now that is going to be my b created by all four wires all four of these wires will have the same b but here's the thing so what makes this problem so hard you're probably thinking well the answer is 48 somebody's probably saying the answer is zero i don't know let's see what we can find out here. You've got to do something. You've got to now wrap your right hand around every one of these wires. And the wires were, say for example, this guy, the one up here. In this one, the current's going into the page, so you need to jam your thumb into this paper. So now at this time, please take your thumb and jam it into the computer screen that you are watching. And when you jam your thumb into this computer screen, this is where this stuff gets good, jam your thumb into it, I'm doing the same, my fingers are going this way. Now that's telling me the direction of the magnetic field around that wire. Now I'm going to do the same thing. The one down on the bottom, jam my thumb into the screen. My fingers are going to wrap that way. Go to number two, this one up in the top right corner. Now, this one, the current's coming out. The current's coming out. So take your thumb and set your hand straight on the screen with your thumb pointing out. And you'll notice something. Your fingers wrap in that direction around that wire, and then they'll do the exact same thing on this wire. And this is why you have to use that right-hand rule. Now, this is about to get a little bit crazy right in the center. So try and stay with me if you can here. See if I can't get me like a little set of dashed lines here. So dead in the center of this thing. My lines are a little bit crooked, but oh well. Bam. Oh, sweetness. So dead in the center of this, essentially, what is my field going to look like? Well, each one of these has a 12 micro Tesla field. And now what I've got to do is kind of take a little look. Coming from this one, and that field is going to be at a dead right angle. So the field will be at a dead right angle pointing to the right to that spot. How do I know it's going to the right? Because I wrapped my thumb around that and found the direction. So I've got there a 12 micro Tesla field in that direction. Now, let's look at this guy over here. This guy, if I extended off of him, my field is actually pointing dead this way. So I've got a 12 micro Tesla field in that direction. Now I'm going to keep going to each one of these. Let's go to this one up here. So this guy, it looks like I got a clockwise field. So in the center, I've got, oh, good grief. Use a different color here, maybe. This guy has also got a 12 micro Tesla in that same direction. And now, lo and behold, if we go up to the one in the top right, wrap your hand, look at the direction it's going. Da -na 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 -na. Which means at this spot, I've got a 12 micro Tesla in the exact same direction. Holy cow. So how can I 
define what the magnitude of this field is. It's called a hiker in the woods question. You did them when you were ooh, probably in physics part one. Here's what I'm going to do. I want to look at just the center of this hideous, ugly drawing. And all we've learned is this. I'm going to see if I can get me another set of these crosshairs. And I have learned this. <laughs> I've learned, I've got, that is not what I wanted at all. And delete, away with you, sir. What I've learned is this. I've got a 12 and a 12 both directed in the exact same direction here. I have got a 12 and we said it, a 12 directed there. Which means we could just say, doesn't that just mean that we've got essentially a 24 this way and a 24 this way and I would say that you are exactly correct with that and that's what we got we kind of simplified that a little bit now maybe you remember doing the sum of the forces back when you were in physics 1 chapter 4 well we're going to do the same thing here I would like to know one thing. I would like to try and figure out the angles in this problem. Wait a second. All the sides were equal lengths in this problem. That's awesome. That makes every angle 45 degrees. So every angle is 45. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to do a resultant. I'm going to sum up my x's. It's a hiker in the woods. If you don't know how to do a hiker in the woods, go back to chapter 3, vectors. I've got... Sum the x's. I've got a 24 micro. See if I can get this right. I've got a 24 micro Tesla cosine 45. Get rid of those units. That's hideous. So let's do this. I've got a 24 cosine 45 minus, now do the one to the left, a 24 cosine 45 which basically tells me that the sum of the forces x is pointless. It cancels itself out. So how about the y? I've got a negative 24 sine 45, and then I've got a negative 24. Both are in the exact same direction. So what is, and this is going to be my answer. So what is negative 24, what do we got here? Sine, making sure I'm in degrees, 45, would be 0.707. And then let's times that by 2 because it's basically adding together. So negative 33.9, negative 34 micro Teslas straight that way. That is my resultant magnetic field in this problem. So there is my resultant. So the whole point of these problems is trying to get you to find a B, which is the easy part. Then you have to go back, find the vector off of each one, and do a sum of, in this case, some of the forces, a sum of the magnetic fields. I see another problem down here already that wants us to do that, and I'll do that one in the next video.